Hello and welcome to this latest in a series of tutorials introducing you to stencil and showing how to make a simple maze style game and what we're going to do in this video is add some collectible items to our level and there's a few ways of doing this I've seen different people approach this task in different ways I'm just going to show you the way that, that I'm going to do it so the first thing I need to do I'm in my dashboard and, and, and I'm in the actor view and I need to add a new actor which is going to be my collectible objects I don't want this as a tile it needs to be an actor so I'm going to click here to create an actor you should be familiar with this process so I'm going to speed through it quite quickly if you're not sure how it works um, then you should probably go back and check one of the previous videos so I'm going to call this one key card because I've got a kind of sci-fi theme game my collectibles are going to be key cards, but yours could be coins or anything really. It doesn't matter, it depends on your type of game. Uh, I need to add an animation, so I need to import the image that I'm going to use. And there is my key card image. So add that, and then we are good to go, hopefully now. But the first thing I need to do is actually change the physics settings for this object because what I don't want is a movable pushable object uh, it needs to remain stationary on the screen until it's collected so I'm going to set this to uh, cannot move and then that shouldn't cause me any problems from that point in right what I can now start to do is think about adding it to my level I can do it straight from this screen here if I want to uh, or I can head over to the to the level tab and I'm just going to give you a little tip at this point. You can see, maybe you can see that I've got grid lines set on my level, and you can actually toggle the grid lines on and off like that. And I think it makes it easier to have the grid lines on because you then know where you're putting stuff, and it makes it easy to plan your levels in advance. The other thing I've done is I've, I've put snap to grid on, which is that magnet icon there, and that means that when I add uh, an object where you'll see what it will do when I move over here it moves it entirely into the square there's nothing where there's no, at no point does it kind of sit between two tiles on the board it actually just slots in nicely so I'm just gonna put three objects right underneath each other like that and then we're gonna see what that does I'm gonna pause uh, I'm gonna pause the video while the game compiles and we'll just have a look at what that's done for us so far. Okay, so I'm just waiting for my game to, to finish compiling. And here it comes. And that's what I thought would happen. Basically, there's my objects. I've got my, my bad guy following me. And I can't actually collect them. I can collide with them, but I then stop when I hit the coin. And I don't want that to happen. So what I need to do... Sorry, not the coin, the key card. What I need to do is program it so that when the key card is hit by the player it will disappear so we'll look at how to do that we're going to need to do a little bit of code very very simple bit of coding so I'm going to go over to my key card tab here and I'm going to go to the events tab and I'm going to add an event notice I'm applying the event to the key card I've seen people do this kind of thing lots of different ways but this is the way that we're going to start with so I'm going to do add event and I need a collision and then what I want to do is I need to choose uh, actor of a type so what I'm going to do now is set this up so you can see I've got my scratch style block here so when this actor so this actor is obviously like the key card if it's an actor type so if I double click on there well, the actor I'm going to check for is the player. I'm not going to check the key card because the key card can't hit the key card. And I'm not bothered what happens with the enemy. So I'm going to set this to player. And then, so when an actor hits a player, what I actually want it to do is for, I actually want the, the key card to disappear. Well, for disappear, what we're actually going to do is, is, is kill the object. So if I just do a right click, and then an undo, not undo, sorry, place block. And then I want actor properties. There it is, kill actor. Drag that in. 
Now, what I want it to do is kill self. Because if you think about it, this is applies to the key card. So the key card needs to, to get rid of itself when the actor hits it. I hope that makes sense. So now that's that's added. And what I'm going to do, just so I know what that event does, is I'm going to rename it. So it's collect key card is the name of that event. So I will recognize that when I've added more events to my game. And we'll compile that video, uh, compile the game now, see what it looks like, and hopefully that will work. Okay, so it's just compiling the last part of our game. And what I'm hoping to see this time is that when I move my character down the screen, when it collides with the key cards, the key card will, will disappear. So it, so it looks as if it's been collected. So hopefully that should work. I'm just going to wait a couple of seconds for the game to be ready. And there you go. You can see I've, I've moved my moved my player into each of the cards and it's collected them perfectly. The only problem now that we've got um, is that we need to do something when that happens. So frequently in a game like this, we might want something to happen when the, when the player's collected all the objects. So adding a score or making something appear. So in our next video, we're going to look at adding a little bit of programming to enable a score and to keep a count of how many objects we've collected.